During the boom period of 2007, 2008, construction grew 14% to become a contributor of GDP above 3.5%. Um, obviously, things have changed a little bit, but have they changed for the worst? I believe no. I think we have been a little bit overheated in, in that sector and that we're changing gear now. And obviously, we have to take a breather and think about uh, how do we now maintain what we've been building. Mm -hmm. But uh, the upward pressure on civil engineering will remain for many, many years in South Africa and indeed in Africa because uh, we come from a very, very low base of service uh, services to right. especially the poor people. Okay, just t tell us what your expectations for the construction uh, figures will be later on today. We certainly hope that it won't uh, hurt us too much because we've be had this boom and bust uh, cycle for many, many years. And in fact, uh, for the first time since the, the 70s, uh, we've been able to, to remunerate our engineers mm -hmm. at, at uh, reasonable rates mm -hmm. and the employment went up. So we certainly wouldn't like to see a serious deterioration. In, in, in fact, I'm a little bit concerned that we're overreacting and, and maybe uh, getting rid of staff at this stage while uh, it's just a hiccup. Okay, let's talk about this hiccup because many people said that uh, for construction industry players, their log books were filled by um, World Cup 2010 uh, orders and a government infrastructure program. Now that all of those projects are, are up to uh, deadline, uh, you're going to see uh, an unwinding within the sector and people needing to look for opportunities above and beyond the South African uh, economy. However, the president announced over 840 billion rands for infrastructure spending in the next three years, um, and that should provide some support for the construction industry. What are your views on public spending? Can it carry the sector forward? I believe it can. Uh, the real issue is at the decision-making level that we should get the decisions to move forward on this capital that's been made available. Obviously, it's on paper at this stage. Mm -hmm. I think there's been a huge focus on 2010, but obviously a number of the projects were not built specifically mm -hmm. for 2010, like the uh, Gauteng freeway improvement system, yeah. uh, how train even. The, uh, the, but the focus has been on, on, on 2010. I think once that's gone, we have to refocus, right. and especially on the decision-making side. You say that things at the moment are on paper, and that reiterates a position that many uh, construction companies have been uh, lamenting, is that the tendering process for government projects is often cumbersome, it's delayed, and even right now with the new pledge for infrastructure spend, it could take almost a year, 18 months, to work out those contracts. We're concerned about that. Uh, I think that the processes are cumbersome. Uh, we are currently at our engineering planet future, uh, sustainability beyond 2010. Yesterday we had the uh, COCTA there, the uh, 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 department. They're telling us on municipalities, we have a turnaround strategy that's going to kick in right now. The main issue is how do we get our politicians and our decision makers right. to move a little bit quicker and plan ahead. Right. There's been serious accusations how long it takes right. to get MIG money through the system, for example. That's accusations against the state. What about recent accusations against the industry that says uh, the behavior is often anti-competitive, they've colluded in terms of bidding for the same uh, tenders and then compensating the lost bidder so that you have a dominance over the projects? Certainly I've heard those stories. And obviously, we're a small pool. Uh, you know, our members in, in the institution itself, only 9,000 members. Yeah. It's a small pool. Uh, I would say there may be some truth in that. Uh, on the other hand, mm. uh, the, the accusations that, that prices went up, that's comp competition for a smaller group of people who have right. to deliver. Right, your contributions to this conversation. Uh, what are you expecting, first and foremost, for the construction figures coming out? And what do you make of the poor turnaround in terms of the issuance of government tenders and then the counter-accusation that within the industry there's uh, tender fixing? Yes, I, I do expect a bottoming out of the of the recent drops we've had. I think there might be a bit of small recovery seeing either now or in the near future. But my question with, with regards to government tenders, for instance, look at the car train, is the cost overruns that we are seeing coming through. What, what, what are we seeing in terms of cost overruns, in terms of the budgets that we are seeing? And I think the car train, they're talking about, you know, 
almost 10 billion rands. That's the cost overrun on that. What are we seeing? If the government's are allocating 800 million. Uh, what are we actually going to expect in terms of how much is actually going to turn in the end to actually get those projects built? Uh, we hear all of this, and, and obviously uh, that uh, there's some truth in it. On the other hand, if you want something quicker, and you compete uh, with materials, right. with people to actually deliver these projects, you must expect right. that prices will go up. Um, and I think if there's a scarcity, for example, of pumpkins on the market, right. the price goes up. I think this is also what we're seeing in the civil engineering industry. All right, now a lot of focus on energy security in South Africa, building of power plants for ESCOM, um, also mines going deeper and deeper. So there's a lot that can be done by the civil engineering fraternity in terms of devising solutions to a lot of these problems in the mining economy and also within the energy and power sector. Absolutely. Yesterday we heard that uh, decision, the new pipeline from Peter Maritzburg to Durban, the water pipeline, where you have a, 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 a quite a long drop in, in, uh, in elevation, if you like. Um, when they had to dissipate energy, they changed it now into creating energy, uh, hydraulic uh, methods. And I think there's a lot of innovation going on right now. That's why we have this uh, in Daba, not a conference, where we try to focus our members' minds on innovation. Right. And the Department of Science Technology also yesterday said, that's the future for us, innovation. All right, and very briefly, moving into new African markets, there's a whole residential property boom in a country like Kenya, a real estate boom in Nigeria, for instance, and uh, a need for the expertise of South African engineers and the financing of construction companies to move into these markets. On the financing, I wouldn't like to talk. On, on the South African engineers, yes. On the other hand, we have 14 institutions from Africa around the table, uh, today to, uh, and yesterday, and we're discussing the exchange of expertise and building capacity in Africa, because engineering capacity in Africa is really not good enough to, to actually do what we want to do and sustain what we already have.